Hi, my name is Christine Oliver. I've been painting watercolors for 19 years, and I'm going to demonstrate a very simple still life using a lemon. And I will tell you the techniques that I will use and a little bit about the paints and brushes and paper. So today we're going to do a demonstration of a lemon, a still life, very simple still life. And for this demonstration, I am using a very limited palette. I have put my paints in this small palette, but I'll be mixing here on the larger one. So I just want to show you the colors. Quinacridone Rose, and I'm just going to give you a little idea. First of all, when you first start, you can spray your paints to let them um, get a little mushy, okay? So here, I just want to show you the colors that I'll be using. This is Cranacridone Rose, very, very nice color, often used in uh, still lifes of, of vegetables and fruits. This is Alizarin Crimson. And from other um, classes that you've had, you know the difference between hot, warm, and cool colors. And I always arrange my palette. This one is Grumbacher Red. I always arrange my palette so that I have warm colors going to cool colors. I find that that's the way my brain thinks, and it's easiest that way. This is called New Gamboge. That's a lovely yellow. It's a little bit on the um, on the warm side, on the orange side. This is Oriolan, and these paints um, are mostly Daniel Smith paints. This one is Windsor Green with a blue shade, is what it's called, Windsor Green Blue Shade. And you can see that the more water you add to a paint, the lighter it becomes. So with watercolor, the secret is to make sure you understand the water to pigment ratio. That's the most important. This next one is cobalt blue, and you can see that. And my last on this palette is Prussian blue. You can see this is a very, very dark blue. So you get a sense of what colors I'll be painting with today. You'll notice that I have two water containers. The first one is for cleaning my brush. The second is clean water. You always want to have clean water. And if you have to, change your water periodically throughout your painting. I also use a regular cellulose kitchen sponge. This is what helps me control the amount of water and pigment in my brush. So this is where you'll see me dab in the belly of the, of the brush. An instructor told me once that you want to mix your colors with an old brush. If you can see these, there is um, less of a point on this. This is a brush I've been using for probably 15, almost 20 years. This is a relatively new brush, and you can see the nice point on it. So you don't want to use your new brushes to mix because you'll wreck the point. If you're a new per, uh, watercolorist and you're just starting out, you may not have um, a, a brush that is old and used. But get an inexpensive one and remember, if you can, to use that for your mixing. The first thing that I do when I start a painting is I do a value sketch. I have a little sketchbook this size and the value sketch helps me work out the composition of what it is that I'm going to paint. I have it close to me at all times so that I can actually um, test colors on the, on the sheet so that I know I'm mixing the right colors. So the first thing we're going to do today is with the um, lemon drawing that we're going to do, I'll do a value sketch. 
and it does not have to be a very detailed sketch. It can be very simple, but it lets you know what your composition is. And in fact, I'm going to shorten this because uh, the the uh, photo that I'm working with is not um, as rectangular as the um, the area that I've just drawn. So what I'm doing is I am actually getting the location of where this lemon is going to be on the picture. Okay, I'm using a soft. Um, this is a soft number two lead. You can get um, art pencils as well. But this will give you an idea of, because you want to show your darks. What I like about this photograph is that there is um, a lot of reflected light. I'm going to show you here. This is reflected light coming off the light um, surface. This is direct light, and the light is coming from the right-hand side. Then, of course, you have the shadows, and you have more um, reflected light back here on the back end of the, um, of the back side of the lemon. I am going to make the tabletop. It's hard to see on this photograph, but it's about like this. It goes like that. And then here... This doesn't have to be a picture-perfect um, drawing, but you want to get a sense. Where value sketches really are, are useful is when you're working um, out the composition. This composition has pretty much been um, uh, worked out for us, so it's probably less important. But the thing to remember about watercolor for drama in your painting, you want to have the darkest darks and the lightest lights together because that is what um, that is what will give you the drama of your painting. This background, and I'll show you how to do a graduated wash. You'll notice that the the um, lighting is brightest right here. There's a little bit deeper. Um, background on both sides. So I'm just indicating that. And now the most important is to show where the um, where the shadow is. And it's going to be um, it's going to be uh, it's going to actually follow. There's, this is fabric that is on um, the table. And you can kind of see where the folds are in the fabric. So the shadow will not be exactly flat and smooth. It'll follow the wrinkles of the, of the fabric. Okay, so the darkest area that I see is right in here on this, this uh, second lemon that's in the back and underneath this first lemon. Okay, I'm not going to do an awful lot with this area here in the lemon because that I'll, I'll show you how to paint it later. And we have some shadow here and we have dark shadow here. I use a um, a kneaded eraser. Kneaded eraser um, is one that does not leave crumbles on your paper. You can also clean it simply by stretching it. And the kneaded eraser is an excellent way for, um, for you to um, clean up areas on your painting that uh, areas where you've made a mistake. So that's pretty good. That tells me what it is that I'm going to be painting, okay? Then what I will do is I will transfer this, I want to transfer this painting now to, I'm going to put this down for a minute, and I'm going to transfer the lemon to my um, watercolor block. 
I happen to be using a an Arches 140. This is a 9 by 12 watercolor block. The reason that these are wonderful is it's glued down on all four sides. So it keeps the paper nice and flat while you're painting. And that's pretty important. Otherwise, you would want to um, you would want to actually tape it down and, um, and use a taped paper. And I'm sure that that is um, described in one of your lesson plans. So I'm, I'm putting my lemon in now so that I can get um, the area. You'll notice I'm just using very light pencil marks. We do not, you don't need um, very dark marks. You really just want to show the basic areas and where you're going to be painting. I'm going to make this lemon a little bit larger on this side. Okay, so there, that my um, kneaded eraser comes in handy. Also remember that the oils in your hand can transfer to the watercolor block. So you want to make sure that you're working with um, clean hands before you start to paint. Okay, now I'm going to put in the shadow. And the shadow that kind of peeks around underneath and goes up over the fabric and comes around this way. So there's the shadow, if you can see it, of these two lemons. Now there's actually another shadow that is in the back, which is um, kind of a secondary shadow. It's coming off of the lemon. And this is where my tabletop will go. And I will bring the tabletop uh, in this direction. Okay, so I feel pretty confident that I've captured everything that I want except for these wrinkles. I want the wrinkles in here. So this is a wrinkle that comes in. This goes here, and this goes here. And there's a wrinkle there. And one that comes off this. Those are going to create visual interest as you start to paint. I don't know if you can tell if you can see this because it's very, very light. But that's all you need. You don't need to have nice dark marks. Um, and, and some people erase the um, pencil marks. I, I leave them. I don't mind pencil marks. Mm -hmm.